I'm Steve Wiggins, and this is the Groundworks Ministries podcast. Today we are reading from the book of Numbers, chapter 30. So let's focus on various verses, but we're going to begin with verse 6. But if her father prohibits her on the day that he hears about it, none of her vows and none of the obligations she put herself under are binding. The Lord will absolve her because her father prohibited her. Or what about Numbers chapter 30, verse 8? But if her husband prohibits her when he hears of it, he will cancel her vow that is binding or the rash commitment she made, and the Lord will forgive her. Or Numbers chapter 30, verse 9. Any vow a widow or divorcee puts herself under is binding. And finally, Numbers chapter 30, verse 16. These are the statutes that the Lord commanded Moses concerning the relationship between a man and his wife or between a father and his daughter in his house during her youth. Now, I'm betting that not many women's rights rallies begin with citing these passages. (laughs) So perhaps a closer look is in order. Numbers 30 is giving practical direction for the time that it was written, as well as providing a greater metaphor for God's relationship with Israel, which is now extended to the Messiah's relationship with the church. In short, it speaks to us. So often in the Bible, Israel is referred to as a virgin or as a wife. The church is called the bride of the Messiah, and potential followers are depicted in the parable of the ten virgins. So, God is known as both father and husband in the Bible. And I believe that Numbers 30 is less a commentary on the impetuous nature of females in general, and it is more a testimony of the absolution and the redemption which God directs toward His beloved. And whenever a virgin or a young girl, a wife, committed herself in a rash or a binding manner, either her father or her husband had the option of canceling her vow as long as he acted the moment that he found out about it. This passage is not intended to shame females, but to show God's great grace and His mercy. So Numbers 30 is a picture of how we, the virgin daughter of God, or the bride of Christ, impetuously commit ourselves to sin. And yet when we confess and we make that sin known to God, God is willing to forgive us, canceling sin as if it had never happened. Consider this from 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. If we confess our sin, He is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You'll never get yourself into some deal with the devil that God can't undo. Who is not covered under this arrangement? Well, widows and divorcees. Now, keeping with this metaphor, Jesus is alive forever, so Jesus' bride, the church, will never be widowed, but Satan's will. And Jesus promised never to leave us or to forsake us, hence his bride will never be divorced, but Satan will leave you in a heartbeat. So in short, while salvation is offered to all who would receive it, those without a personal saving relationship with the Messiah have no access to absolution and forgiveness. Their vows to worldliness are legally binding, along with the consequences for having not vowed to the Messiah, Jesus. I'm Steve Wiggins, and this is the Groundworks Ministries podcast. Check us out at groundworksministries.com.